All right. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us once again on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today I have with me Yuri Kruman. Uh, Yuri is the CEO of HR Talent and Systems Consulting, an award-winning HR consultancy. An interim CHRO, he's also certified in SHRM-SCP. Uh, Yuri, we're going to circle back to those and, and get a, an explanation on some of those acronyms there. Yuri is a, a well sought after speaker and an expert on HR digital transformation and employee experience. Yuri is a Newsweek expert forum and Forbes Coaches Council member, as well as a regular contributor to Forbes and entrepreneur. Yuri, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Michael. Great to be here. Yeah. So to, first of all, I want to, again, circle back to those, those acronyms. What is an interim CHRO? CHRO just means chief. Um, okay. And how... And how about SHRM SCP? That's Society for Human Resources Management Senior Certified Professional. Awesome. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, that tracks. All right, awesome. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for just kind of explaining that real quick. Let's get into the questions here. Yuri, why did you become a coach? It's you know, for me it's not necessarily something that I grew up thinking, hey, you know, I'm gonna become a coach. It's just something that has always been a part of my personality and at a certain point you kind of see okay people are coming to me with questions about career stuff because i've changed careers by now six times so whatever whatever it is i'm doing i may not always you know hit a home run in every single position but i've i've managed to reinvent myself over and over again and and just you know figure out who am i in the process and then put it all together when doing business Love it. I love it. Question number two, what are you doing in your coaching business today that's unique? Aside from you know the framework, a lot of these frameworks are actually pretty similar. It's not that I, you know, I didn't go out looking for you know 20 different frameworks that exist to adapt mine. I just came up with mine in order to help myself. Mm-hmm. And at a certain point, it's like, okay, well, that's that's what I call this. This is my process. I'm not someone who uses any sort of personality tests or any anything else that puts people in buckets because largely that's that's not helpful. If anything, mm-hmm. that it's actually counterproductive because people over rely on on some algorithm. And you know, humans humans are are more complex than any any number or index or personality type. So I just came up with this as a practical solution to you know, help myself and then started helping other people and I started seeing patterns. And with those patterns, I went to companies and said, you know what, there's a reason why you're losing your best people. And you know, that's because they don't have any alignment. And you know, you're probably also micromanaging them and not helping them grow and move forward. You're not giving them visibility, not communicating. So I can help you to turn all that all that around so that you get out of a vicious cycle and turn it into a virtuous one. I love that going from vicious to virtuous. Yep. That's great. Question number four, what is your, the, what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? The biggest challenge is always some people pretend like they want transformation, but they don't really, they're, they're too scared of change. You can throw, you know, every kind of tip and trick and, and book. And if they're not really ready to transform, if they don't feel enough, you know, something between a desperation and, and, and just urgency from whatever source, they're not really going to put into practice what you tell them. So for me, I filter for that up front. And I just at, at a certain point stopped working with people that are, you know, it goes it goes with the same profile as nickel and dimers and, and people that are not serious and they don't really want to invest in themselves they they just want a magic bullet or you know a magic pill and i i got none of that so <laughs> you gotta you gotta do the work first <laughs> if you do the work consistently for a long period of time it happens right away <laughs> there you go overnight almost Nice. there you go great so okay moving on to question number five if you had a do-over in your in your coaching business what would that be I'm not big on this stuff, you know, do I have any regrets or, you know, what I would do um, over again, but I would, I would probably say, get a clearer sense of my ideal client profile from the beginning, charge more upfront and, you know, just make sure that I have a clear sense of how to run a business because the, the, you know, coaching (laughs) sense, you know, being very empathetic and, and helping people 
for whatever reason is often in opposition to practical considerations of how to run and grow a business. And, you know, that takes time to learn. Mm -hmm. so if I do it over again, I would probably do something more fundamental business wise before diving into, you know, whatever coaching framework. All right. And finally, the bonus question. What is one book that you would recommend all your clients read? There is something really, really good I came across recently. It's, let me see, how is it called? It's uh, Dr. Nadia Jackson-Baev. I've recommended her book quite a bit recently. It's the How to Reinvent Yourself, I believe. She runs like the Chief Reinvention Officer group on uh, Facebook. And she's a professor and someone who studied reinvention of companies for a long time. So that's that's a tremendous resource. It's it's really beautifully designed and, and, and super, super useful. Nice. All right. That's great, Yuri. Do you have anything that you'd like to promote? And also, where can people connect with you online? Yes. Actually, I just put out a book myself, actually from the same publisher as the book I mentioned. Uh, so my book is called Be Your Own Commander-in-Chief, and it actually has all all of my best learnings and insights from coaching people by now about 1600 plus and you know it, it just very briefly talks about what i believe are the four most important elements of self-help those being number one how this is all about behavioral change through language and psychology so the first level if you think of think of it as climbing a mountain the first level is your conversation with your body Right? So how you eat, how you exercise, how you sleep, your biorhythms and all that. Number two is your mental models and life skills, meaning, you know, how, how does your mind work? What makes up your worldview and how do you manage expectations, make decisions, manage your stress? And then, you know, how do you approach business, career and uh, finances? And then uh, going up. You have how do you deal with other people, meaning from some kind of uh, place of core values, for example, or reciprocity, and um, your reports, your wife or kids, and other people. And then the last one is what does your conversation look like or sound like with God or the universe, right? How how do you approach things like meditation or prayer and rituals, and and how do you feel? How do you find a way to feel like a part of something greater than yourself? And then toward mm -hmm what is the meaning of life and all of that kind of thing. So it's a real philosophy. The book is a philosophy for modern life. It draws both upon ancient wisdom and modern practicality. I love that. I think that of, the greater purpose can be overlooked so frequently these days. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, good stuff. it's full of, full of humor and stories about all my failures and what I learned from them and just very practical kind of 80, 20, kinds of guidance. And then if the reader wants to go deeper, I have lots of resources that I recommend and assessments and all that sort of thing. Uh, Yuri Kruman, thank you so much for joining us here on this episode of Coffee with Coaches. We'll see you guys all next time. Cheers.